Today on the Orange Huntress, we're going to be making an antler coat rack. Stay tuned. So my husband got a new job in December, which is awesome, but now he has his own office, which he never had before. So I thought I'd bless his new space with some nature. Today I'm gonna make a coat rack out of moose antlers. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I put it all together and all the tools and things you're gonna need to accomplish this task. Hello, hello, hello. Everything you're gonna need will be written in the description down below. So check that out once this video is done so you know exactly what you need to pick up from your hardware store or from your basement also from your bathroom all of these things are pretty awesome i was gonna say inexpensive but if you need to buy a drill well that's gonna cost you something so check out the description down below guys you ready to get started because i am let's do this I plotted my course by figuring out how I wanted my antlers to sit on my wooden round. Then I drew a line, popped my mask on, and went crazy with my handsaw. Oh, so smooth. Back again for round number two, and I just kept checking to make sure that they were sitting the way I wanted, and then this happened. Frustrated and defeated, I waited for my husband to come home so he could do the sawing for me and bring me another blade. So I have my cut round here, and what I didn't bank on was the fact that it's frozen. <laughs> if I'm gonna sand and stain this tomorrow, I don't know what's gonna happen to it. So, I didn't really think about that yet. However, I thought about palm sanding techno. You should start with 80 grit and work your way up to 220 to get a really nice, smooth surface. But I didn't have 80, so I started at 100 and stayed with 100 the whole time. Because I actually really loved the texture of the whole thing. So this is my round pre-stained and still ratched up from the saw, but I love it. I placed my antlers on the round to figure out exactly where I wanted them to sit and then I scored a couple places with my pencil around each side just so I could mark it and know where to drill. I drilled about one inch deep at the thickest part of my antler. Then using the 1 8 inch drill bit I drilled two pilot holes. My wood round was just under two inches thick and I used a two and a half inch screw. I grabbed my square bit and I screwed the screw through the pilot hole to the other side. Then I marked with my pencil where I thought the screw hole would land and began to drill. I switched to an 11 64 inch bit because it matched the size of my screw and drilled my hole bigger. So this, <laughs> it turned out way better than I thought it was going to. I am so surprised. Guys, it looks so good. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did it. I lost the footage of me varnishing my round. So I thought I'd give you a little bit longer just to stare at it. Cause it's gorgeous. It's epoxy time. So you squeeze it out onto the cardboard, mix it with the popsicle stick and adhere the mixture to the antler and the wood. Then I took the screws drilled from the back side into the wood and then into the antler while holding it awkwardly. Super awkward guys. To remove any epoxy, you can use acetone or nail polish remover with some Q-tips. To finish, I used a 20 pound mounting hardware piece that I got from Walmart. Guys, here it is. joining me today peeps i hope you like this as much as i do and if you want to see more diy or hunting cooking content subscribe and i'll catch you next wednesday